about Fernando. You knew him when he was a child. What did you see that caught your eye that you knew he was special? When he was even just uh, four years old, that's when I first moved in with his mother. Um, I moved from one province in Cuba to Havana to study dance and theater, and I had nowhere to live, so I rented a room, and it happened to be with Fernando's mom. So it was by chance that I ended up there. And there is this little kid that is extremely hyper, and his mother wanted him to be a pianist, and he was taking piano lessons. He would not stay s still for a second. He would jump on that, on that uh, you know, bench, would not play the piano. He would always be jumping. Mm -hmm. So then she finally, she was a ballet teacher for little kindergarten kids. Mm -hmm. So she would take him while she was teaching the other little babies, he would sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. So he started little by little imitating those kids. And there is this little boy that has incredible physical uh, conditions and always jumping, always turning on his own. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point in time then the Cuban Revolution started with a, a ballet school for boys mm -hmm. and his mom said maybe this is going to help him develop an appetite. Mm -hmm. So she enrolled him in ballet school. How important is Fernando to the world of ballet? He has been described by dance critics and uh, the most knowledgeable reviewers and his peers as the greatest American male classical dancer of this generation. He became an extraordinary dancer. You went from being his coach to his archivist. What was the transition like for the book? Fernando and I had been working on a, on a possible autobiography for several years. He had been organizing the material. Um, we had been rewriting rough drafts. Uh, he would send me his chapters and I would modify them and uh, rewrite them as needed. And in the middle of the project, he dies. Then, you know, I, I kind of was brain dead for a whole year. I couldn't touch anything. I had to, I didn't know. I kept asking myself, how can I ever finish this book? What, how can I do this? Then it kind of gradually, uh, I, I, I finally, looking for how do I do this? It finally occurred to me, maybe I can see this like a movie, uh, like an interactive story. If he's not around anymore, maybe, well, I had been there all, all the time, all along. And I remembered and I said, what if other people that worked with him and meant a lot to him, to his career, uh, what if their voices help to tell the story? And I interviewed a lot of them. And the whole narrative took a different life. Um, it ended up being what I call a three-way narrative. Not only Fernando's voice was telling his story, but then you have several of the big ballerinas, Cynthia Gregory, Natasha Makarova, Eleanor D'Antuono. They would tell their side of a specific event or performance which Fernando was talking about in his story, and they would come in from the other point of view. And the story took on a different uh, perspective, and I loved it. And then uh, I said, what about a third narrative and the magnificent reviews that he had gotten through his career, nationally and internationally? I said, I'll put them in there too. And there was a three-way narrative. So this book, even though it is an autobiography, it ended up being a little bit more than just an autobiography. Um, so I hope that he would be very pleased with the way it turned out.